think early on people thought it was like, oh, they're just, you know, a bunch of guys trying to make some money off bands playing free. And it wasn't really like that. And I think one of the things that's kept it going is the passion of the people who really love music. And, and that's still there, I believe. And, and that really comes through. And people really care about... And, and people get upset if somebody says, hey, that was a crappy band you put, you know, it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's important to, to a lot of the people here. But here is the, uh, the panel on the New Music Seminar, which was held in New York in the early 80s. And uh, Roland had been to the, to the New Music Seminar, as I had, and... Uh, uh, he realized that we really needed something uh, in Austin, an equivalent version, to get access to the people in New York and in, on the West Coast. Some people used to come with the idea of getting signed, which I don't think was really ever the intention of the people of, you know, who put on South by Southwest. It was to get to the next level and to get more understanding in the business and how to book your bands and how to have a contract that works and how to... How to, how to really up the ante, as it were, and, and get, deal with the press, deal with all these different aspects of, uh, of promoting your music. Here we can see a 25-year sort of timeline through the years. So you can see the range of artists was, has been quite amazing. Um, over the years also, the number of uh, bands from other countries has really expanded. The Swedish showcases, uh, Dutch, Brazil, Japan, all over the world, people are coming from here now. So it's, it's become very much an international festival. The growth has, has meant some problems with traffic and, and other issues, but it's also meant this huge injection of cash into the economy at a time, it's like Christmas here for uh, a, a traditionally dead period of the year when the students are on spring break. It's, it's all the restaurants, the, the movie theaters, the, you know, the venues, the beer sellers, the people that sell ice, everything, you know, this is Christmas for them. So it's, it's helped, and it's actually helped a lot of clubs survive the year that they may not have done. 2010, the estimated economic impact was 113 million, which is pretty significant. That's for all the three conferences. They started off with music, and then it was, they added interactive and film, so it's really expanded. Here you can see the, the uh, number of bands that play and the number that applied. So uh, initially in the first one, it was about 172 bands, and most of them were just asked to, if they wanted to, to, to play for free. And uh, later on, you can see as, the, as time went on, it's now up to over 2,000 and 10,000 bands applying. So you can see they've got a lot of sifting through that try and pick the bands. That, so there's going to be a few rejection letters there. You know, I think the soul of South by Southwest is often the Austin music community because Austin is totally unique from any other city I've ever been to. And it has a huge population of very well musically educated people. And people like their music here. We have Austin City Limits. That's now become a big festival, uh, a yearly festival. There's festivals throughout the year and people like their music and they like lots of it. And I think that is one of the, the reasons why Aust this could not happen in any other in any other place, because Austin is, is it's an oasis in the middle of Texas. We're not like a lot of cities in Texas, and quite proud of it too. <laughs>